Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together one more time. The lady Mary, that's who he is. If you have known this church, you would know that every year we celebrate diversity. We celebrate the beauty of um, coming from different nations. And yet we are united in Christ Jesus. That's what we really celebrate, the diversity in inclusion. As we celebrate our diversity this year, I want us to look at something I'm sure that you already know. I'm sure you know. I'm sure that you know that the value on our lives vary depending on the nation we come from. I know we are equal before Jesus. I know we are equal before God. But it is a fact. The value of our life varies based on what? The nation that we come from. That is how the people, and I'll, and I'll show you very clearly as we go on in the sermon. So my question this morning for you and I, for each of us, and that's the topic of my sermon, as gorgeously as you look this morning, and I want you to genuinely ask yourself this, what is your life worth? What is your life worth? Before we dive into this topic, I want us to rise on our feet and take our Bible reading. From the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 37, verses 34 to 37, sorry. Mark 8, 34 to 37. When he had called the, the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever deserve, desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the, gosp and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? One more verse. Verse 37. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? May the Lord bless the reading of his word into our heart in Jesus' name. What will you give in exchange for your soul? Heavenly Father, we know you are, we are valuable to you. If we were not, you wouldn't have given us your son. So this morning we ask that as we go into this word, give us understanding. Amen. But most importantly, challenge us. Challenge our hearts to know what is valuable and what is important. Let your word be understood and let your people be blessed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you, choir. God bless you. Have you ever wondered how much your life is worth? Even if you don't, economists do. Economists do. There is a, what I call the, there's a EPA, Environmental Protection Agencies. There's a setting, there's a setting of values that they have on what lives are worth 
based on the countries we come from. So when you say, I'm from Singapore, they have a calculation for the value of your life. If you say you are from Cameroon, they have a calculation for the value of your life. Now, even though let me put this this way. If you look for the nations and you're looking for the quality of life, because I know you guys are very wise, you're going to start checking everything before I even leave the altar. If you look for, <laughs> if you look for the quality of life, quality of life is different from the value. If you look for the quality of life, America is not in the first, I think it's number 19. The first countries where the quality of life is best are Switzerland, Denmark, the Netherlands, and sometimes Norway. That's how they put that order. I looked it up, America was about 19. But when it comes to this, I want to listen to this very well. When it comes to the worth of life, the value of a human being, the value that is placed on, the, on a human being, America comes way higher than the rest of the world. Let me give you some numbers, because I know the kind of people that I, that I have. <laughs> The life of every single American, each American is valued at $7.4 million. And I'll tell you how they calculate it, don't worry. If you come from China, <laughs> what is wrong with you people? Why, why, why are you guys like this? If you come from China, it's $1.365 million. And I know what's on your mind. <laughs> Oh my God, Nigeria wasn't doing badly at all. Seriously, if you come from Nigeria, the value of your life is $485,000. Why are you laughing? India is a lot richer than Nigeria. The value of life in India, of an Indian is $275,000. $275,000. And if you go to places like Burundi, it's 45000 The cost of a Tesla, the smallest Tesla. So as we celebrate, and let's get serious, as we celebrate nations today, you want to go back home. I don't know where you come from. There are many of you. Go back home and check the value the world placed on your life based on the nation you come from. And you will be amazed. Why are some lives more, worth much more than others? Why are we even valuing lives anyway? What is the use of this seemingly silly evaluation? Let me, maybe I should quickly reverse a little bit. I should let you know the origin of this sermon. Maybe I should do that. Maybe you understand that the Lord wants to say something to somebody. I, I, was, I was having a meeting with Dick and Adair Rebe during the week. And the, the Lord puts these exact words in my heart. What is your life worth? Came very clearly to me. And I must have subconsciously, you know, when somebody talks to you and you don't know you're talking, and I said it out. I said, what is your life worth? And he thought I was talking to him. <laughs> it was so, such a random thing that jumped out of my mouth. And he gave me a number. Truly, I do not even remember the number of what he said because I was not talking to him. The Holy Spirit was communicating with me. And I kept on saying those words, I'm sure for a moment what I said as pastor, gone. I must have said those words a few times. What is your life worth? 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 I was trying to listen. And all of a sudden he got up and said, Pastor, I think I will excuse you. <laughs> and he left. I knew that that was the word that the Lord wanted for somebody. So when he left, I, I, I Googled, what is a life worth? I Googled it instantly. That was when I 
discovered what I just told you now, the dollar value of a life. The dollar value of a life. And how it was calculated based on different nations. Now, you would expect that I would get angry. Particularly because I'm both Nigerian and American at the same time. And I'm just one person, so when I'm one place, I'm one 485,000. <laughs> and when I'm in another place, I'm 1.74 million. Now, it could be very annoying when you think about it. But you know your pastor. Instead of getting angry, I was more interested in the criteria that they used. Does that make sense? How did they come up with these numbers? How the Kuli Akindoju in Nigeria is 485 and the Kuli Akindoju in America is 7.4 million? What did they use to calculate this thing? And that was when it got interesting. And honestly, honestly, at the end of my research, it made sense to me. It made perfect sense. And I knew exactly what God was saying to me when he suddenly said to me, what is your life worth? Even using the criteria of the EPA. The same criteria. Let me tell you how they did it. Each life was calculated based on the policies or in the place. Each life was calculated based on policies that is in place in that particular country to save a life. Let me explain that. When a country sets policies, they're just policies, such that death of a single person is likely to occur one in a million, rarely, rarely occur. The corresponding cost of that policy is the value that they put on the life of the citizens of that nation. Does that make sense? I can hear you. The value of life statically is a measure of mortality risk reduction. Too much English. Let me say it in simple English. The value of life is the benefit you get from a decreased chance of dying. You still don't understand that? Ah, King's God, Chapel. The way they calculated is that the value of life is based on the benefit you get from the decreased chance of somebody dying. For instance, the value of my life to you is the benefit you get from a decreased chance of me dying. Is it getting easier? So if I ask you what is your life worth, if I ask you what is your life worth, the value of your life is directly proportional to what you are willing to do to save your life. Yes, that's true too. The price you are willing to pay to stay alive is, worth, is what your life is worth. The value of my life to you is the benefit you get from a decreased chance of my dying. And that will determine what you will do to preserve my life. Does that make sense? I tell the protocol all the time, the value you put on me, the protocol is to, is what, is what, to, to preserve my comfort is the value you place on me being comfortable. There are countries that automatically provide security for their citizens 
because they are considered valuable. I, I'm sure that they are considered valuable because the, their death or their non-existence will not only bring hardship to their family, it will bring hardship to thousands of people. I'm sure that the likes of Jeff Bezos, the likes of Elon Musk, they don't ask you, they don't ask for security. Trust me, FBI is following them. They don't have to ask. Because if one of them dies, the ripple effect is, is so disastrous to any of the nations where they exist. Does that make sense? So let me ask you again, what is your life worth? What is your life worth? I want you to be very serious with me because I'm talking to nations now. I'm talking to people who come from, maybe you're from Burundi, $45,000. You see, as you sit down this morning, you may not fully know what your life is worth. But you know who knows? God knows, yes. But that's not, you know who knows the value of your life? The people that depends on you. Your life is so valuable to some people because you help them. There are people that will pray for you before they pray for themselves. There are people that knows that when they are no more, their children and their wife are okay. They know that their life is con will continue. So you know what they, how they will pray? They will pray that you don't die before them. I told you a story briefly, some, maybe some two, three sermons ago. Let me just explain it properly today. About a brother who casually mentioned to me one day about someone that was requesting continuously, was becoming annoying. The person was requesting for a constant stipend of $100 a, a month from Nigeria. And I asked him a few questions. The first question I asked him was, what is this person to you? He said, Pastor, he's, he's a member of my family. The second question I asked him was that, can he afford to give it? And said, oh, first of course you know I can. Yes, I can. He didn't know where I was going. The third question I asked him was, what difference will this money make in the life of this particular person? Ah, he said, a world of difference. Equivalent of 70,000 Naira every month consistently. Oh, that life will change. The next thing I said shocked him. Shocked him that he looked at me as if I was crazy. Because the next thing I did was I begged him. I said, please, please, let me be the one sending this money. Let me be the one. Just don't put my name. Just let me give you the $100 every month so that you can send it to this person. He was so shocked. I said, you don't even know the person. I said, you don't understand. <laughs> I said to him, I was only trying to increase the value of my life. Because I know that anyone you keep alive will do all to ensure that you stay alive. Because your life is so important to them. It worth a lot more. Please ask the next person to you. What is your life worth? No, I want you to ask it a minute. Maybe they will sit down and think how they are building the worth of their life. Forget about EPA. Forget about the fact that you are $48,000 or $7.4 million. What is your life really worth? What is your life really worth? 
Remember, the value of a life is determined by what you are willing to do what? To do to save it. That's the value of a life. To the people you help, they can pray all night just to save you. Because you must not die. Can you remember that uh, there's a soccer player? I, can't, I don't know names very well, but you, I know you know. Comes from Senegal or something. He's a multi-British rich guy. But he gives 70 pounds to every single person. Money, thank you. In his village, he has built a school, built a hospital, and he has done so many unbelievable things. And when they were asking him, he said, why would I spend my, my, my money on uh, Ferragamo and uh, Ferrari and all those silly things when I came from nothing and I can help people? Can you imagine that a whole city praying for you that you will not fail? Because their life or his life is worth so much. So it's not about EPA. It's a simple question. Because that's, the Lord, that's what the Lord is asking you this Sunday as we celebrate the diversity of all these nations. What is your life worth? You may have come from Togo or Ghana. You may have come from Russia or Ukraine. Maybe you are here from America or from China. Or maybe you are from Kano, Uma here or Bumasho. What is your life worth? That's the question you should ask yourself as you walk out of this sanctuary and this month of October. Now, let me just round up. There are two people that can determine your, your worth. Forget about the fact that I, I say that the people you help value, yes, they value. But there are two people that can really enhance your value. There are two people. Apart from the people that are praying for you, no. There are only two people, you and what? And God. You and God can determine what your life is worth. Now, as far as God is concerned, God made up his mind about you and your, the life, what your life is worth a long time ago. Very long time ago. That's why in John chapter 3, verse 16, he says, he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should live. So he already, you are worth more than his only begotten son. In Psalm 139, verse 4, David was praying to God and he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. What was he saying? He was speaking about of the care and attention with which God made all of us. Which further defines your worth? If somebody takes the trouble to fearfully and wonderfully make you, you are valuable. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. Can you imagine? He has created us as a new uh, us, uh, a new, a new in Christ, so we can do great things. He has crafted us masterly. So there's no doubt about how God feels about you. There's no doubt with God about what your life is worth. Now the question, and I'm going to close with this, is what is your life worth to you? Remember what I said about valuation. The value of a life is determined by what you are willing to do to save it. What are you willing to save your life? For instance, if you walk up to your doctor tomorrow and your doctor says, your liver is beginning to pack up. And he says to you very clearly, you must either stop drinking or reduce it drastically. Or you will die. And for the moment, for like a week, when you left the doctor's office, you were sober. But after a week, you said, it's going to happen, go happen, girl. 
Man, no go die. Make a shark. And you went back to doing the same things that you were doing. What does that tell you? You value pleasure of drinking than you value your life. It sounds very real, but every day we are forced to make a choice between eternal life and the, the temporary pleasure of this world. And tell me the truth between you and I, I'm just being frank with you this morning. Each time we make a decision, when you choose the pleasures of this world, you are defining what your life is worth for a temporary pleasure. We clearly do things, clearly we do things. I'm not kidding. We take God so, so, as, as almost nothing. That's why people will be on the beach right now as I'm speaking, while they should be in the house of God on the one day that he has asked for out of seven days that he gave you, two hours. It's the value we place on our life compared to the alternative. We do things that clearly indicate that we value the world more than eternal life. Clearly. And are, as I'm talking, they are convincing themselves, Pastor, I work, let me rest, Joe. The Bible says in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What you are trading are not equal. What is your life worth? When you are valuing your life this month, remember another powerful thing that Jesus Christ said. In Luke chapter 12, verse 15, he said, take heed. Tell somebody, take heed. Beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. Please understand this simple logic. Even, it's even how the, the EPA determines the value. It is not in the abundance of the things you have. It's not the net worth of a nation that determines the value of the nation. It's what the nation is willing to spend to save a life and the life of its citizens. Let, let, for a good example, that's why America is worth 7.4 million and a life in China that is probably as rich or, I don't know, I don't want to say anything that, because we are online, they, but they are probably as rich, if not richer. But the life, the value of life is 1.36. It's not, the, it's, it's not, it's not the, 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 in the abundance of the things that we possess. The world calculates the value of your life by what you are willing to pay to eliminate or diminish the possibility of death. Now I'm talking about eternal death. There's a country called Bosnia, I believe. And they are valued at 800, I'm just trying to remember because I have this photographic memory, about $803,000 for Bosnia. But if you compare Bosnia to India, that was 275, India is way richer. What are you doing to what are you willing to do to save your life? For instance, if you are willing to buy a car and pay more because it has airbags and it has a, I don't know what they call it, is this AVS or something, braking system that will protect you, but you have to pay more. If you are willing to pay more 
for those things to be in your vehicle, it shows that that is the value you have for your life. Some people would just like it to be boom, boom, big. Everybody can see. But the tires are not working. <laughs> There's no brake. It is fully loaded, but it is 20 years old, but it, is, it, looks, it looks nice on the outside. How much are you willing to take a job or move to a job with a lower risk, even though it pays less? That's the value you put on your life. Let me give you another one before I close. Any job that you do that does not allow you to serve God is a risky job. So what are you willing to give up to avoid that kind of risk? Is the value you put on what? I can't hear you. Whatever you are willing to do to save your life determines the value of your life. Life does not end here. The value of life does not end on earth. If it does or if it did, Jesus Christ would not need to die. As I close, I give you one statement. What are you willing to give up? Or what are you willing to start doing to save your life? It's either of two things. As you bow your heads this morning, as you step into another month, as you are accessing, assessing the value of your life, two things. What are you willing to give up to save your life? Is it your pride? Is it your ego? Is it too much pleasure? What are you willing to give up? And the second question is equally the same. What are you willing to start to save your life. As you bow your heads this morning, I want you to make that decision that you are going to stop something and you are going to start something simply because you want to increase the value of your life. You are going to start to be more generous so that the millions of people all over the world that are praying for you will increase the value of your life. You have to start serving God. You have to start doing things that are less risky. Like using God's time for your own pleasure. Father, I thank you this morning. Maybe some of your sons and daughters are here this morning. I want to talk to you. What are you willing to give up so that you can have eternal life? It takes only a little humility for you to raise your hand above your head so that I can identify with you this morning that you are saying, Father, I want to increase the value of my life. I want to know you. Just lift your hands above your head and I will just connect with you wherever you are. And I will pray with you this morning because you are making a solid decision. You are deciding that going forward, your life what's more. And God should help you to give up some things and to pick up some things so that your life will be worth more. Lift up your hands and let me pray with you this morning. All over the sanctuary, just wave, wave your hands at me and say, Father, I give, you. I give you all the grace. I give you all the glory. I decide for you this morning. God bless you over there. Just wave your hands at me continuously. Yes. Father, we ask that you accept this once. It's a decision that they have made. And it will be a permanent decision. You will help them, Heavenly Father to continuously enhance their life so that they will know you, abide with you, and you will preserve them for many more years, not only here on earth, but also in eternity. Thank you, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.